Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to the channel and uh, welcome to Turkey and if you're new to the channel welcome along to you as well and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button also if you enjoyed the video please do give it a like as well so great to have you along and we are at Isparta Airport I'm not going to pronounce that long name <laughs> my Turkish isn't very good uh, but yeah, welcome to uh, the channel. We're going to be doing another flight video here uh, from Isparta Airport all the way to Gaziantep Airport, uh, still central Turkey. Now the mountain you can see right in front of you is Mount Davras. All right, so the airport we're looking at is uh, obviously not stock scenery. You can download it from flightsim.to and surprisingly it's actually got just one runway now all the uh, buildings and all the the uh, roadways you see behind are just um, taxiways actually uh, behind that so uh, they've got space here for another runway but no it's just one runway you see here but yeah so what we're going to be doing today is a flight from here to uh, Gaziantep airport uh, so roughly about an hour's flight and you can see a Vuelin uh, airline there, A320 Airbus. Right, but we're going to be using the CRJ uh, today and you can see their IVAO Turkey division. Now don't fly by, by IVAO, I'm a vaccine man, but uh, that's the sister, I would call it a sister, a, a sister online uh, air traffic network uh, to uh, Vatsim, so both of them one and the same in purpose that is um, yeah so anyway so what we're going to be doing today is taking a, a flight from here so uh, without further ado let's uh, get into the cockpit it's already powered up well let's just uh, start our preparation hi and welcome to the flight deck of the CRJ 700 and you can see that we are all powered up and uh, basically ready to go well not ready to go but ready to uh, start inputting some figures into our fms so let's do that shall we right so uh, just taking the database which is good all up to date 17th of june we're ahead and yeah everything there is okay need to go to pause in it and just get our uh, GPS location so we'll click on that and put it to this scratch pad and then do our set position there okay and let's just go to our flight plan all right and now I've actually created a flight plan in Simbrave so we're going to just put the uh, reference for that in and get that all set up Good, and we got a route loaded message. This is normal. Uh, it just says unknown on route star transition. So, yeah, okay. Uh, let's go back to the flight plan and. Okay, so, right, so that's that's all fine. Let's, let's get rid of that. Now, if the uh, quality of the vocals sounds a bit different, then that's because I'm using the headset mic. Uh, using the HyperX uh, headset, so yeah, that's the reason for the change of voice quality. All right, uh, yeah, and it just basically means I don't have a, a studio mic right in front of me. <laughs> okay, so right, let's click on departure, arrival. So I, I'm expecting runway two three, um, SG one mic departure. So we'll put that in. We'll check ATIS in a minute, and departure arrival again. Arrival, and I'm expecting the COSA uh, 1 Tango and ILS 28. All right, so we'll put that in. All right, now then we go to the legs page, and uh, you bet your bottom dollar there's going to be some kind of uh, inconsistency, which there is, or discontinuity, should I say. So, yeah, okay, so we, we're flying in via COSAN and I'm going to click on COSEN there and click on previous page and you can see that we have another COSEN there well uh, instead of bringing the last COSEN to this 
section. I'm going to bring it up to the Cozen here so that we've only got one. And then click on the next page, see if there's any more. Yep, there's Charlie India 28. And then click on that there. Okay, so let's just scroll back. Good. Execute. And yeah, that is that. Now you can see here that our flight plan here is that's the graphical representation. Let's click on MFD data. That brings up this textual format. All right, to scroll through that, we go to MFD advance, click on next page, and there you can see it scrolls down. Okay, all right, that looks all good. Go back using the MFD data. All right, we want to try and scroll through our flight plan. So let's just uh, use the format range outer ring to do that. Okay, so now you can see we got the flight plan there. And to scroll through, all we got to do is click on next waypoint here. And then it scrolls through, putting the waypoints in the middle of the screen. Okay, so that's top of descent. And you can see our constraints all bunched up there. So let's just zoom out a bit. Okay, so there we are. So there's our constraints down to runway 28. All right. So now we've done that. That's all okay. Let's put this back. All right, what I need to do is just get rid of something. I need to get rid of, go to the legs page again. I need to get rid of that waypoint there lambda because it's just it just means we're going to have to fly around uh, up there and back down again so i'll get rid of lambda click on dell and go to lambda and just execute that and that will take care of that right and okay now the thing we need to do now is just go to performance so i'll go over here click on performance and change this to zero fuel weight all right bring up our flight plan from Simbrief, and you can see that we've got a payload, no, zero fuel weight of 27824 and a planned ramp of 4008. Okay, so we'll put that in there. So 27824, two, enter, and the fuel will go back 00. zero eight enter okay set payload and simulator copy perf data to fms uh init fuel from aircraft actually that's changed that when i've done the init fuel let's go back eight two four okay so that should all be okay back to the fms and click on perf perf init and now it's given us 70 uh, passengers now you can see there it says 68 all right so we want to change that because that will mess up our figures a bit so let's type in 68 forward slash 104 and just transfer that there now when i created the flight plan in sim brief we i actually joined the passenger luggage and also the uh, passenger weight as well so that's all included in that 104 figure times 68 so I'm going to put naught for cargo execute and you can see that gives me that my 2781 and 3182 flight level is th flight level 320 okay and what I'm going to do is just go to the back wall panel and this is where our fueling point is Click that up, you can see that we got 4005. Let's put in a little bit more, okay? Uh, that'll do. Click on this one to uh, balance out the fuel. Good, and we can turn that all off. And we just check our fuel so fuel synoptic button and there you can see our fuel there for 015 and we'll change this to 4 
0.015. Okay, slight adjustment there. All right, so uh, pretty much that is done. Fuel management, you can see our reserves there. Okay. Right, so let's just uh, put that back on a progress page, put this on the legs page. Oh, a couple of things I'll also need to do is um, uh, let's have a look. Right, flight plan copy active and right radio. Okay, now radios, if you leave them in auto, they will auto tune the most logical frequency. Okay, so, but you know, if there's a navade there, then we can actually put them in uh, one uh, in navade nav two. All right, so yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that, make sure that it does auto tune. All right, so good. Right, so that's done. So what we need to do now, basically, is just go through our flows. All right, so we're going to take it from the top. Electrical power, uh, battery master is on, and these are dark and guarded. All the gens are down. That's dark and guarded. Firex monitor, we've got to do a test. So I'm going to click on this and click on, then click on the right mouse button, then drag the screen down quite quickly. Now what we're looking out for on the uh, MFD right up here actually best turn this to stat so what we're looking out for basically is up here it should say fire sys okay all right so and we're looking out for a couple of lights down here so i'm going to do that fire sys okay and those lights are there and you can see it's gone out it's pretty fast isn't it <laughs> it goes out it goes out really fast. If you if you blink, you miss it. Right. So left hydraulic shut off valve. Those two are okay. Uh, we should have put our nabs on really. We powered up. Uh, boost pumps. Leave them as they are at the moment. These are dark guarded. These are auto normal. Both closed. Yep. Yeah, okay. APU. We'll just switch that on. And just check. Yep. Yeah, that's spooling up. They got APU in bike. We missed that. Missed that. <laughs> that came on pretty quickly and it's gone off pretty quickly. So I assume it says APU in bite. Uh, you've got APU start there, APU shut off valve opened, and so on and so forth. Um, the APU light, this goes off at about, or when, yeah, that's gone off now, about 60% showing that the APU is running okay. Ignition, all these are okay. Hydraulics will uh, turn that on. And you can hear the hydraulics on. Okay, and what we can do is go to the hydraulics page and just check that. Okay, uh, it does actually request us to go to auto. Auto then on. You see there, the system is discharging. Just checking the levels as well. They look good. Okay, there. They're fine. We'll turn those back on. Right, so over here, cabin pressure panel. Right, now, cabin pressure. Now, our our airport elevation is all right. Um, I'll show you another way to do it. You can actually get it from the uh, from the, from the flight plan. Okay, so uh, so from here we can see the airport elevation is two eight three five. But just to show you that, you can actually get that figure from the database as well. All right, so click on the index index here database and just type in your ICAO code right there, Lima Tango Foxtrot Sierra. Put that in there, and then you've got the uh, 2835 there. So 
yeah okay now uh, to actually scroll up and scroll to the uh, pressure that we want okay it's on the stat page so we we'll press stat there now you can see here that that right here is the figure we want <laughs> but it's, it's going to be a bit awkward to actually see it uh, yeah so what I'm going to do is actually look if I, if I do this you can see that figure changing one two if you've got good eyesight the other way to do it if you're not aware is uh, uh, press the right alt key and click on the page like that and there it brings up uh, the, a, a pseudo page if you like all right, and then you can do it that way. All right, it does take away the immersiveness, though I must admit. But for convenience and expediency's sake, you know, it's <laughs> it's no-brainer, isn't it, really? So two eight two eight three five two eight four zero uh, two eight two zero. No, two eight four zero is closest. So we'll do that. Okay, uh, we'll adjust our trims while we're here to seven point uh, two and right that's done just making sure that these are in the correct positions air cons we'll put the reset fan on that's fine that's fine these are okay we'll do a, a de-ice test press that for about two or three seconds let go of it and then we can actually have a look at this point here it says adds heat test okay which it is good and we'll turn that off and we'll just go to our ice in the ice in there or no not the ice in sorry windshield heat and then we'll switch the probes on the lights are okay emergency lights armed just switch these on passenger oxygen is okay ELT is okay and our light is required okay right now working from this side oxygen test that's fine not sure why we would need this. Okay, performance. Now what we want to do is set our performance in the PFD, which is here. So we, we can go to the performance. We're using flaps eight today. Runway conditions are dry, and we have our VR1, or a V1 of 138, VR138 knots, V2144, and we have a V2 plus. 10 at 154 so we can click here set all if you look in that screen you can see that it's all it's all going to uh, set itself excellent all right so that's done uh, we don't need any of these all right the nose wheel steering is is off and right so Okay, these these controls here. If you want to set the V rest manually, you can do that. Uh, we have a decision height here as well. We want to test the ra radio altitude? That's working. You see it there in the window. Traffic radar terrain. You can see there. This radar is off. Terrain is off rather. It doesn't work actually. <laughs> to be more specific. And nav source. This is very important. Do make sure that it's on FMS one. Okay, uh, that's assuming you're using the flight plan. All right. Uh, okay. Right, and we're in hectopas pascals. Set the baro there, which is good. Okay, so uh, we should do a CVR test. I mean, it's pretty pointless in the in the sim. All right. Clocks mode local time 1524. All right, so now we come around here. We're going to stall test. That works. We're not going to do the GPS GPWS as it takes too long. Uh, flight director, make sure that's on. Autopilot bar is up, and all these knobs are okay. Uh, what else we got? Heading, we should be setting this to our heading of 230. 
Oh, see that's gone right past. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Oh. So it spins a lot a bit and then it spins a bit more and it goes well past. Right, so... Let's set that to 2-1. Two, three, okay. Where is that actually pointing? Right, two three is our runway heading, so let us Right, so you can see here this is this is runway heading, but we've got a slight turn off there um, immediately at two one four. Okay. So, right, so that's done and out. Right, now our transition altitude is 15. Flight level 150, so we'll put that up to 150. Okay, and everything else there is done. Just move along to here and we'll just check our audio warning. That's fine. Oxygen. Alright, now the more times you press that oxygen button, it will actually de deplete our oxygen, as you can see here, is 1840. So it will actually deplete that. Okay. So. Right. Okay, so that's. That is done. So we worked across. Okay, now I'm going to work down from the upper pedestal. So just checking the uh, main landing gear bay. Bay overheat. Okay, it's working. This is there. Uh, lamps test. Okay, we'll leave that as it is. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. All right, all these are in, and up, and down. Cool. Okay, and. Right, so we'll lift that. We're working down from here, so TCAS, rel on above normal, and we'll do a test. This is fine, that's fine, this is off. Okay, stab trim yeah, test, I'm not sure if one is okay. done. Okay, so we want to do that. Now, you notice here I'm pressing the mark trim, can't get the light off. Okay, I've actually discovered that you can't actually get this light to operate or to get the system to start unless you do a stab trim test so I'm going to click this okay and then go to the uh, ICAS so you can see here spoiler stab in test now don't move the yoke rudder pedals or anything like that while it's doing that so that's completed. Now, if I go to the mark trim, you can see here you've got mark trim there and your damper. So if I go down, it goes off. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Now, making sure these buttons are in norm. That's on nav, as we know. Parking brake is set. Looking down, there we've got these trims here, which we need to look at. So. Uh, we'll do that and you can see here this has gone out of trim we'll do it back okay that's fine do this one once again you can get up a uh, screen here if you want to just have a more closer visual on that it does make it easier Okay, good. That's all done. Right, lighting as required. Your damper, click on that. Your damper one and two, just making sure your damper's gone off. Yep, and working our way down. Norm. Yep. Oh, by the way, here, 
just missed this one while I for forget. Um, this is the FMS tune, so you need to have this in the up position so that the auto tune can work. And also, this is your this button here is your A to C buttons uh, switch. So yeah, put that number to number one or two, and you can select the A to C. And also make sure that this is on as well. So kind of skipped past this really all right so we've sorted it out now and these are okay comms panel is okay that is fine it's off it's fine okay and just finishing off with this make sure that's in normal yep okay good so all we need to do now is just go to our checklist and just make sure verify we've done all these that's done, audio warning, audio warning, that's it, we check power check, fire exit monitor, that's done, external lights, check the fuel panel, check, bleed air, yep, APU panel, that's working, start panel, hydraulics, heavy pressure, air conditioning panel, entice, windshield, emergency lights, are armed, standby compass, we didn't check that, um, Yeah, that's okay. Nozzle steering, that's off. Clocks are set, instrument panels. Now, yeah, we've done everything there. Okay, and up pedestals, check. Thrust lever quadrant, check. Avionics, check. Trims, check. Your damper engaged. Source select panel here on this. Uh, what's otherwise termed as a reversionary panel alright so now let's go to before start pass signs are on landing elevation set altimeters Q&H FMS set and checked IRS aligned radios nav set takeoff briefing alright so a takeoff briefing basically is is this here so let's just go to our off brief in there. Now if you want to uh, see a complete tutorial on Navigraph then please go to the channel as I've done a, a tutorial, quite a detailed tutorial as well on Navigraph. So alright so this is our departure and you can see transition levels uh, 15,000 and here we're using Esken 1 mic departure runway 23 I assume uh, we'll get the ATIS up. Where is it? It's Park Town Airport information Oscar 1200 Zulu. Wind 166 at 10. Visibility 6. Sky condition 1200 feet scattered. Temperature 3. Oh, yes, one way 2 3. We got Oscar. Oops. No, sir, I don't need you. Alright, let's just G2 detune that. Okay. Um, right, so where were we? We were talking about the departure. So we're climbing out on a radio of 214 because we're just going to uh, bank left immediately uh, heading out to IPT to D7 left turn to IPT VOR and then on to Eskin right now we need to get rid of this where are we yeah we need to get rid of this little kink so right click Oh, actually, no, 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 no. Let's go here and delete Lambda. There you go. That's all sorted. 
Alright, and yeah, so we're going to turn around and then uh, back over to VOR at the airport and then pick up our, our uh, standard instrument departure from there. Right, now, as regards airport, let's turn this on. Okay, so we've got our, our aircraft there. Now you can see that there's no uh, taxiways to the runway. So literally we're going to be turning around and heading that towards the holding point here and then backtracking ourselves on the runway and turning around to line up for our takeoff. Okay, so that's that. Right, so takeoff briefing is complete. So clear to start. Okay, personal electronic devices are off, APU is on, electrics are checked. Okay, so as far as electric con electrics are concerned, we can disconnect the ground cart and we haven't got ground air cart connected. Uh, parking brakes are set. Take the chocks off. Okay, and close our doors up. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the captain, we hope you enjoy flying with us. Oh, actually, Before takeoff, we would like to encourage all passengers to watch our cabin crew display the safety features of the aircraft. It might be good, actually, to get the luggage on. <laughs> oh, my dear. Uh, sorry, let's go back. Uh... Baggage service. It's Martag Ground 064. Could you please send the baggage? Sorry. Alright. We won't see what he's going to do. Ah, oh, I forgot to do that. I should have done that ages ago. Alright. Okay. So, uh, we'll go to our progress page. And. Well, what we can do, we can do our taxi, actually. So, let's do uh, checklists. Oh, no, we won't do taxi because it's engine start, actually. So, yeah, so he's coming around there. Okay, let's do an engine start. Right, so uh, electrics, takeoff data, beacon, let's put that on. So uh, they all know we're going to start the engines. Keep clear. They're above head height, so that's uh, better. Right, fuel pumps and quantity. Fuel pumps and quantity. Fuel pumps and quantity. Well, we checked, we did check the fuel quantity, which is. Here, it's okay, and turn those on, and then we'll start. Let's have a look. Hydraulic pumps auto on, parking brake off. So we'll start our engines. Door. Yeah, I know, I know. Doors open. Right, so the engines are uh, the right engine is has been is being started. So what we need to do is, when it gets to twenty percent and two, we will lift the latch, put the lever forward. You got you you've got to wait till the latch actually flicks back up before you can actually pull this down. Otherwise, the engines will shut down again. Okay, just checking. Oil, 39, and you can see oil temperature rising, oil pressure rising. Let's just check out what we're doing outside. Alright, that's nearly finished. Good. Okay, right engine starts. That's gone off, that's successful. Alright, so we we'll start left engine. Seat belts fastened and your seats in the upright position. In case of a drop in cabin pressure, breathing masks will drop from the ceiling and should be placed over your head. 
Left engine start indicated. 19, let's just lift the latch. Wait till that flap goes down. Okay, which it has. And then let it rest there. And idle. Okay, left the engine start. You can see the light is, well, light's gone off there. Okay, so we're cool outside, so we'll just close up the doors. Aircraft. Close the doors up. Alright, good, so we got successful engine starts, and uh, what we need to do now is basically I go to our after start checklist, generators are auto electrics checked, they're disconnected, bleed valves are auto packs are on, are they? Let's have a look, ECS page. Yes, packs are on. You can see the green uh, rectangular bar there. Okay, let's put that back to this that page. Okay, and APU is on. They're, they're on at the moment. Antice not needed. Nose wheel steering armed. Okay, so taxi. Slats and flaps. Flight controls check trim. So slats and flaps. Eight. Flight controls. Pull right, pull left, pull forward, aft, right, full left. Good. And we got our stabilizing trims at 7.2. Okay. Not all sure why this isn't green here. You know? It should be green. So we can move that up slightly. There we go. Now this one doesn't work. Let's have a look. I should turn green, but it's not. I've never seen it green, you know. On this page, that is. Alright, anyway. Um, we'll leave that as it is. Uh, right, okay. Uh, trims are checked. Thrust reversers on. Flight instruments. We've done those. Brake temperature is over there. They're cool, quite literally. All right, so that's all done, and next one is before takeoff checklist. All right, so we're going to get our push out now, and I'm going to bring up this uh, very very cool piece of uh, add-on software. So you can see here it's going to control our tug. So I'm going to select tug. Oops, that's not working. That's not good, is it? No, nope, that's not good. One, what I'm going to do is just shut it off, and then we'll start it again see if it works ah yes good nothing like a good old reset alright so this is really good I, I really do like this it's small neat compact in design we can actually do it larger actually good and the thing is is that the tug you see it's connecting here but it won't actually do anything unless you actually request it. Alright, that's all ready. So now uh, you can actually take off the parking 
break. And actually, before we do that, we need to actually uh, look outside and get the extent of our move. So uh, let's go back outside, make sure there's nothing behind us, which there isn't. Okay, so. Yep. Okay, let's go back inside and let's start our pushback. So. Right, and you'll notice we've got a pushback speed here as well. So we can actually do it a bit slow if you want. Yeah, that looks a bit. That's quite okay. Well, in uh, aircraft there, A320. Nice. Okay, I'm going to select right turn. And straight. And another right turn. The right, the the left and right turn angle is not very sharp indeed. So you can see here that I've actually missed the taxiway line. So it does actually take some getting used to. Oh, I've got it on that line. That's not the one I want. Right, perfect. <laughs> okay. Right, so yeah, perfect for this line, but it's the wrong it's the wrong one. Alright, so yeah, take some getting practice. Uh okay, so we can uh, put a parking brake on. And disconnect the tug. And he disappears into thin air. No, not good, not good. Alright, so uh, thank you, pushback helper. You can download that on flights in to right okay so now uh, we've done all the taxi yeah okay so just for us to request a taxi really so let's uh, go back to clearance and request east departure is part talk ground zero six four with Oscar request taxi to the active departure to the east 064 taxi to and hold short of runway 23 by taxiway Alpha Bravo. Contact tower on 118 decimal 65 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 23 using taxiway Alpha Bravo 064. Taxi lights. Don't forget that.
Right, okay, so parking brake on. Actually, do you know what? It's a bit difficult with this track IR to get the parking brake. Uh, there you go. Right. The good thing with this, with the track IR, you can actually select your keys for your uh, uh, custom views. And uh, like this, you see, so it just goes straight there. Um, track IR still moves, so it works seamlessly, really, with... Uh, your custom views okay so uh, right so uh, before takeoff checklist so lights and strobes fuel transfer flow flight attendant advised TCAS so let's go uh, this here now the purpose for this is to uh, turn off the automatic gravity uh, transfer flow so uh, for in our case for example we're going to take off climb and do a climbing bank left turn and that's going to throw all the fuel on the left so uh, this system if you don't turn it off will pick it up and try and start transferring the fuel to try and balance out and the only thing with that is that when we do actually level off uh, we're going to have incorrect fuel so we turn it off for departure strobes Okay, TCAS, radar terrain, that's not working, and CAS, so TCAS here. Uh, CAS, it's all checked. Messages there are the ones we expect. Ah, see, it says ISIL open. APU is still on. Let's turn it off. Good. Uh, that's why it's good to just follow the checklist and check your TCAS. Okay, so everything is there is what should be there and now go to climb and then we can just select or check request our departure. So let's it's bar to tower request. It's bar to tower zero six four ready at runway two tree east departure. Zero six four altimeter two nine or decimal eight seven wind one eight one at one one. Departure to the east approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 2 tree. Cleared for takeoff Lovely hills and mountains here in Turkey.
taxiing, as you can see here, I, you know, it takes it takes a bit of uh, thrust power to keep this thing moving. Unlike the A320 Airbus, you know, it, it just rolls with the least amount of push. This one is very different. Right, so we've got a tight turn coming up here on our left. Now that mountain there, so you can see Mount Mount Davras to our left. Cabin crew, please be seated for takeoff. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has advised that we are now cleared for takeoff. See if we can get in nice and tight. If you're flying on VATSIM, and uh, just check the approach path there, and the controller uh, requests an immediate departure, then what you do is you swing round like this and pretty much go straight into your takeoff roll, right, really, without stopping, as he wants you to be cleared of the runway uh, very quickly, as he has other aircraft uh, very close to you. So if you can't do it, then you just select uh, Unable. Okay, so we're going to actually stop. Okay, uh, put the parking brakes on. Okay, so for our takeoff roll, uh, we're going to hold the uh, aircraft with tow, tow brakes, uh, release the parking brake, and select Toga on the throttle quadrant there, right there. So you've got Togar, which will set your thrust. Okay, so now we will push forward slightly on the yoke and Power up to about 70 to 75 percent. And start our takeoff roll. And thrust up to Toga. So push the thrust levers up to Toga. There we go. For some reason. Oh, I know why it's not going to Toga. Or something in the way. There you go, Togar. Uh, whoops. V1, rotate. Right, positive rate, gear up. Okay, select speed. Nav. Uh, thrust levers back to climb. And autopilot. Okay, and then we can select flaps one and speed up to. 220. There is a 220 constriction or constraint rather. Zero 
Focus part top tower 064 frequency change. All right, so we wound up to 220. Okay, so remember we got that little turn coming up. So everything is selected, flight director selected. And flaps one. Flaps one should go off really about 200. Okay, now we got this we got this turn coming up here. Okay, so it's going right to go left. There you go. Look, it's just, the flight director is moving across to our left now. I don't know why it's doing that. Is nav on? Nav is on. Right. So it's going to the right. Now that that that's not that's not correct. So we'll take it out of nav, out of autopilot. Right. And let's back round to the left. So we're flying manually now. I believe it's that's happened because um, it could be. I'm not sure. No, it shouldn't actually. I was thinking it because we took Lender out, but that should have nothing to do with it. So I'm not sure why it's doing this. Okay, but we'll just bring it right round. So we've gone out a little bit further than we wanted to, but uh, because of this little because of this little glitch. Got those sandy beaches, lovely. Beautiful. There's the airport just down there. Oh, no, 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 no. I always get mixed up with these, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, I still fly manually at the moment. So uh, what we need to do now is right. So if I select autopilot now, let's see what happens. Nav, head and sink. Right, we're coming up to our, our fifteen hundred one five flight level four uh, one five zero. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, that seems to have corrected itself. Back on path now. Right there. So I'm not sure what happened there. <clears throat> As regards to the takeoff run, now that went a bit wonky. 
I'll tell you why. Um, as I was powering up the throttles to Togar, the uh, the headset, the HyperX headset has got this little box on it. It's, it controls the volume and the microphone. Actually, let's, let's get this. Right, so. We're over 10,000 feet, so we can actually power up to 290. So just need to select the uh, altitude to flight level 32. Zero. Okay, three two zero. We got it. And select speed. Back up into climb. And select our. Speed for we're looking for two nine zero on our climb. Oh come on! All right, there we go. Two nine zero on our climb as per uh, VNAV schedule. Okay, so we're heading there and we are nicely cruising up. Okay, so let's just get that back. Okay, so we're in a stable climb. Right, so as I was saying, <laughs> uh, yeah, the takeoff was a bit wonky. This because when I was pushing the throttle right up to Togar, this little box that's attached to the uh, the cable about halfway down on the HyperX uh, actually was was in the way, <laughs> so I couldn't quite get Togar, and I uh, had to uh, lose. Well, yeah, got a bit distracted, and uh, yeah, it went uh, went a bit wonky. All right, but uh, yeah, there we go. That's the reason why. Okay, but we're safely in the air, so and we're cruising, uh, climbing nicely. All right, so let's go to after takeoff checklist. So. Climb, fuel flow, back to auto, bleeds are set, and thrust reverses and casts. Thrust reverses, cast checked. Right, let's scroll that out a bit. Right, so there we are. So we're heading down to KTEC and then we're going to do a left star approach. Yeah, not sure why it went left, to be honest with you, right rather. Yeah, it turned right here as opposed, as opposed to banking, banking left, so yeah, not sure what went on there. Alright, so we're at flight level uh, 220 and climbing at 290 nicely. So, we've got VNAV here, target speed 290 and yeah, it's 
good. Right, next is Key Tech. Why does it have? Uh, why does it have Vapec there? Let's go to the next page. Okay, well, I can't see Vapec here. Is that Vapec? Oh, it is Vapec. Yeah, 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 it's Vapec. Cool. Okay, so we're flying over the Taurus Mountains uh, at the moment. And... Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, the first time I decided to use this <laughs> HyperX uh, headset, then it's, it's, it's given me problems on takeoff. Not good. But anyway. Right, this tent is going to come a little bit later, and we just go back to our page. Now, we can actually put the VNAV on, you can see how far we got before our VNAV, our descent. So we go to MFD menu, and we want to turn that window to show the information. So we'll select VNAV, and you can see we've got Kozan. Alright, our descent is in 38 minutes, 303 nautical miles. It doesn't look that far, does it? You can see the information here. So, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, you can select um, the right side here and put information on the right, such as ETA. Oops, that would appear there on the right. And intersections and NDBs, and so on and so forth. You've got another page there as well. Okay, so we go back to the left side. Yeah, so that's pretty neat. Uh, we do have a series of constraints. So go to right. So you can see here. Uh, let's have a look. Let's take this out. Right, so way down here, you can see that. Yeah, so we've got our constraints uh, coming in at flight level 130 or flight level two, 120. Let's go a bit. Okay, so right, one three zero, uh, one hundred, flight level one hundred, eight hundred, six five zero, M looks five hundred, and we are supposed to be bang on for uh, flight level uh, four zero zero here at a syrup maximum one eighty knots. Okay. Okay, we're at flight level 290 at the moment, a nice little climbing, and if you have a look here, you can see this banana bar that's telling us where we are going to meet our altitude. Now, when we do meet that altitude, we need to be careful with the thrust setting because that can really go... Um, out of control flight level 290 
don't need flight following. Right, so we can actually turn off that. Right, now watch when it gets to flight level 31, uh, 316. Airbus, Bravo, Mike, Quebec. Watch this. Watch when it goes to 6, up here. Half bank appears. And you can see there on the right hand side, you can see the uh, half bank. The flight com control computers have actually put the half bank on. Um, these lights here, by the way, you got one to the left and one to the right, they are your flight control computers. Basically, the one on the left is FCC1, and that's FCC2. Okay, so it's not just a matter of pushing the button and the light comes on, you know, as if it's just connected to a direct bulb circuit. It's not that. Uh, when you push the button, the um, FCC, the flight control computer, decides if the conditions are met. And if the conditions are met, it will actually show you the conditions are met by emitting the light. Right, so we've captured uh, flight level 320 and our speed is 3, so speed should be 300 uh, according to the NAV, VNAV. Target speed cruise 300, 174 mark. Right, so you can see it's going down a bit. Uh, what's our winds like? So we've got a headwind here. So we'll just increase slightly to 92%. Slightly increase again. Almost running at full power. Still slightly below 300. How much power do I have to give this? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll leave it as it is. 290 will do. Right, so that seems to have settled down at about 2.95. Okay, 
Mark 8 1. Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do now, just to check something. Um, I'm going to select the environmental control system page. Okay. Now, uh, what you can see here, obviously you can see the packs on, and you see here press con two. So those are pressure controllers. We've got two on board. Um, you can see here our cabin altitude, which is six thousand four hundred. That's okay. Right, the maximum is 10,000. Uh, that's standard for all aircraft airlines. All right. Um, our rate of ascent inside is 100. Okay. Our delta P is 7.6. Okay. Differential pressure. Okay. And um, now, as regards this pressure control, if I, if you click it again, it goes to manual. Okay, so you can see here, pressure manual. Okay, we're making our turn now, aren't we? Oh, by the way, by the way, uh, I haven't been doing it, but you really ought to sink your head in <laughs> when the aircraft actually makes a directional turn. It just makes things easier if you have to come off the autopilot and just go straight into heading mode. If you want to adjust your, if you want to adjust your flight plan for some reason, you won't have to. You won't the aircraft won't start going off in uh, some kind of wild tangent. So yeah, so do stink heading. This aircraft does has a have a tendency to rock and roll uh, when it's making its turns. I don't know why it, it just does that. I think I'm heading there. Okay. Right, so what we're saying, pressure controller. Right, so it's on manual at the moment. Uh, this means that you can actually operate these switches here. If you press it again, then it goes down to press con pressure controller 1. Okay. It's still doing this rocking thing. Ah, so, um, right, so I'm going to put it onto manual, right, and what I'm going to do is turn the packs off. Right, passenger's going to get a bit hot, alright, but we'll, 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 we'll give them more sandwiches. Alright, so I'm going to turn the packs off, now you can see our rate of uh, ascent here, our rate of climb within the cockpit, the, the uh, the aircraft. You can, see, you can see that's rising up. So we're going to leave it as it is and just give an eye on it. And see, what I want to see is if we can actually control the pressure, take the pressure down a bit. See if those systems works on the CRJ-700. Right, so, okay, so we've still got 27 minutes to our top descent, wow, time to enjoy the view. Right, so now you can see we've got uh, tailwinds now, so, you know, we we're at 91% and we have to keep watching uh, that speed there because we're not too far off from the barber pole here. Right, how's that pressure getting on? It's 7,000. Okay. I 
do need to actually just keep keep an eye on that. Right, so it's 16.26 at the moment. And we're nicely cruising now at 300. Mark is 0.81. And just checking our fuel actually. So where are we now on this? Okay, climbing up at 300. 7.5. Right, it's going to our fuel page. Checking that. Okay, you can see it's a little bit uh, imbalanced here. But the cross feed uh, fuel transfer flow should actually sort that one out. Right, do you notice that it's put our cabin altitude and rate on the uh, um, the ED1, the ICAS, ICAS1 there, so uh, we'll put that back to our stat page. Has that been there all the time? I... oh, yeah, I, I think so, I think so. Notice these things sometimes. Head in sync. Right, you know what, for the descent, I think what I'm going to do, uh, rather than uh, keep putting in, keep uh, checking all these different points, I think I'm just going to select our uh, uh, final approach fix altitude, which is 4000, and then adjust the descent as I go down. Otherwise, it can be a bit... Uh, distracting having to keep looking at this and also concentrate on the, uh, the aircraft as well so uh, we'll see how that works all right let's give an eye on the cabin altitude let's see what that's saying Oops. right eight four now can you see 8-5, warning. Okay, so we've gone into a warning condition. And at 10,000, 10, it will actually turn, turn to red, basically, telling us 
we've got to use this passenger oxygen uh, button. Alright, so... So, we've 887. Eight, See here, it's 87. Right, so I think what we can do is turn this off. Okay. No, sorry, put it back to manual. Now, because we have more cabin pressure than we should, we should be able to reduce that cabin pressure by operating this, this button here. So we should be able to hold it down and reduce that cabin pressure. So let's try and do that. Just watching the speed. Uh, up, down. It doesn't stay down. Nope, we'll get up this page. No, nope, doesn't work. Put that back on to pressure controller. Oh, there you go. See, when you press that, yeah, to manual, that's when it comes up. Yeah, I thought I didn't see it there. Alright, so back on to the pressure controller. Okay. And we'll put the packs back on. And just check that they're on. Let's have a look. Environmental control system. Oh, good. Right, the packs are on. Okay, so basically the pressure is going to go down this way. All right, so we can't. We should have been able to actually just um, open, use that control to open the outflow valve, control it, and get the pressure down quickly. But um, it's it's not happening. So this is the only way to switch back on the system and uh, the pressure will actually go back down to, to where it was. So we're descending now inside the, um, the aircraft at 700 feet per minute, 800 now. Okay, so, right, yeah, I just wanted to uh, test that. Well, we know it doesn't work. The manual override doesn't work anyway. Um, right, oh, back to the stat page. Okay, so uh, where are we now? 16 minutes to top of descent. Okay, now what I want to do is actually go through, uh, just get some info up. So let's go to, uh, that's our arrival, and let's get this up. So I want our MDA. Uh, Maximum climb gradient. All right, so two, two, four, one, six, and our altitude there is our final approach course is two eight one. So we need to make sure that's selected uh, on the uh, loc. So one zero nine one airport. Elevation two three zero five. Oh, it's down, isn't it? Right, I have to get this uh, page up again. I don't like this page, but there you go. Uh, let's get it down to two. Okay. Uh, check our speed. All right. Make sure that's okay. Uh, why right, our final approach course is two eight one. Loc is one zero nine decimal one. That should auto tune. I've got to give an eye on it if it doesn't. Pre uh, missed approach. Proceed to VOR. Okay. So. Oh yeah. 
uh, VOR. Climbing uh, left turn, radio 275, that's outbound from, from the VOR. Uh, 243, then turn left, climb into 6000, proceed to VOR and hold. Okay. Alright, so yeah, basically holding above, you can see here, holding above the VOR at 6000. Alright, so do note also that the VOR is offset from the airport. That's why this arrow here doesn't actually go down to the airport because it's offset. Okay, um, so we got the normal flight angle, the glide path angle at 3 degrees, so if we're at 140, which is um, roughly what our uh, landing speed will be, we should be at 743 on the VS. And our outer marker is here, okay, and the syrup seems to be our final approach fix. Okay, so two four one six. Okay, so let's set that up. We got thirty minutes of top descent, one hundred nautical miles. So uh, MDA, and click on that on the top, and too far once again. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, that'll do. Right, descent checklist. Uh, Landing elevation set fuel. What's our fuel? Yeah, fuel's okay. TCAS, we know that's on radar, doesn't work. CAS jet. Approach briefing. Complete. Before landing. Okay. Right and Okay, so we've got one more to do, that's our approach checklist. Now, as regards ILS, um, I find this ILS on this aircraft what I call sometime-ish. Uh, or even, I, I, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not doing it right. Uh, sometimes it captures, okay, well it, it captures and then it loses it. Now, I don't know why that's happening. Same thing with the um, the Guarulhos flight, if you haven't seen that one, it's on the channel there, yeah, wasn't able to keep the, the ILS localizer captured, so I'm going to keep an eye on that and uh, yeah, may just uh, abandon the ILS, but use the uh, approach green dot to actually help me descend Okay, so our descent checklist is complete. Now, as far as the airport is concerned, let's actually have a look at that. So, we've done this, okay, and airport, uh, pretty simply, we're expecting that runway 28 and hopefully we can uh, taxi off at Alpha, if not down to Charlie and uh, to the apron, get our clearance from the ground. Alright, cool. Now look at this in front. That looks like we've got a uh, tidal wave <laughs> coming towards us. I've just passed uh, two airports and got an airport there, Lima Tango Delta Alpha. 
on our right side coming up. Yeah, this is amazing here. Right, we need to watch out for that uh, top of descent. So you can see it uh, approaching right here. And we need to actually just adjust our altitude. So let's go down to 4000. What's going on? Four thousand, okay, and sixty three nautical miles before our top of descent. So we should see that snowflake appear in the window there. There's two ways to actually do a descent. You can either use the VS button or you can just use a speed button. Now the advantage of doing a speed uh, select descent is that you can actually you don't have to worry about the throttles. Okay so are we there yet? We seem to be on it. We seem to be on it, but no... Oh, the snowflake's there. Oh, look at that. It's crazy, isn't it? Ah, uh, right. Okay. Let's try and catch that snowflake. Okay, speed, descent speed. And go down to two nine zero. Right now, let's go back a page. The syrup we want three one. Whoops, no, not that one. Right, there it is. Okay, so you can see the, the snowflake there, dead on, because we've selected 3-1, and that's staying the same here. And head in, let's get that selected there. Right, the only thing we need to watch is our constraints. You can see the blue bowl there is... Okay, it's three. three. You can see it's changed there, so we're dead on the blue bowl and on our descent path angle shall I say okay Right, let me go slightly up. What's it saying now? 3,000 still. Right, 
Right, pulled back a bit because we're 300, so let's just try and get that down to about 290. With the CRJ and the power settings, it literally is just a matter of uh, <laughs> practice, getting used to it. Really, you, you the more you fly it, the more you get to know the settings the power settings there at what percentage to put the throttles right and like you can see that I'm adjusting the uh, descent rate on the VS uh, slightly giving an eye on the a snowflake here. I'm trying to avoid actually individually selecting the altitudes for all these different constraints. Let's have a look at this. Uh, let's get rid of this. Okay, you should see the aircraft coming into Kozan uh, soon. So we've got 130 or not below 12, not below 120, not below flight level 100, not below flight level uh, 8000. Let's zoom out so we can see our our flight plan there. So we've got the first constraint coming up. We're above. That's, that's fine. That's okay. Click on that. One zero, eh? Mm, that's not the airport name I wanted. It should be Gaziantep. Oh, Guzeli. Let's go back. No, nope, that's what it is. Lima Tango Alpha Juliet. That's the one. Tower zero six four is one eight miles west, thirteen thousand seven hundred feet with Alpha to land. Zero six four tower. Altimeter two nine or decimal seven six wind two three three and one six. Make left down with runway two eight. Enter left down with runway 28064. Okay, let's see a syrup 23. Right, so let's get our landing lights on.
select thrust reverses now you can see here we are need to be above 10,000 so we'll select that There's our airport there. Right, so we're above 10,000 feet. And now we need to descend to 8,000. Right, syrup is 2-2. Two, two. Okay, so... No, sorry. No, no, no. Yep, syrup, 2-2. Two, two. So, 2-2. Two, two. Actually, no, 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 no. Let's, let's just leave that for the minute. Right, okay, so I'm making sure that we let's creep that back down to two five zero. Get rid of this track IR, it's making things awkward. Trying to find a setting for our speed at the moment. Three thousand. Alright, so we're looking out for 6,500 now. Zoom that in a bit.
So note flaps one. Okay, so now we're looking out for our VS 5500. Alright, what's it saying towards a syrup 1 2? Flaps 8. Now we can select our nav source, our loc, and you can see the loc's already set to 281 there, so no need to adjust that. Click on approach, Should be a max at one eight zero, so let's flaps eight. Let's bring that speed down. All right, flaps twenty. Gone out a bit. See the runaway is just over there on the left. Not sure when we're going to capture that glide slope. All right, let's just select our. Well, in a minute, go around altitude. Right, landing gear as we're 2,000 feet. Okay, so. Okay, flaps 30. Seat up a bit. Right, so you can see here it's capturing the uh, glide slope. Let's just see how long it captures it for. Right, we're in flaps 30, landing gear is down, approach checklist, performance, set 138 knots. Can you see we're losing it? Right. Autopilot off. <laughs> Had enough of that. Flaps 45. Basically just bringing the aircraft in, flying it manually now. Trying to follow the green dot. Four. 
hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. We are floating actually. Get this aircraft down. Thrust reverses. I think we've missed that alpha turning off. <laughs> just touching on the brake slightly, just so we can get this uh, Charlie taxiway. Oops, had the reverses on still. Okay. Okay, so let's stop here. Parking brakes set. Okay, so right, let's contact ground. So request taxi to park in. Ground zero six four request taxi to parking. Zero six four taxi to general aviation parking by taxiway alpha. Taxi to general aviation parking by flats. Alpha zero six four. Right, so the ILS didn't work again. You, you saw it, captured it, and then it just left. So <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the green dot was there for us, so uh, we could actually follow that on the way down, which is uh, a problem. And uh, it's like some flaps, it's done lights, probes, so we'll flick those probes off and flip the lights off leaving the taxi lights on okay so let's Alright, so welcome to Gaziantep Airport. Made it in the end. <laughs> yeah, I do love this CRJ though. It's it's a real uh, you know pig of an airplane to fly, for want of better words. But uh, you know, once you do flight a lot, get used to it, then yeah, it's a pleasure. Right, I think the taxi is a bit, it's a bit fast. Let's slow down a bit.
There's another Vuelin. Aircraft there, so I'm not sure where to go. Uh, okay, let's go that one. Maybe that I think they're waiting for us. Let's not mess this up. I'm trying to set camera views up. <laughs> right, he's not actually uh, marshalling for me. So, uh, and he's not aware that we have a massive <laughs> great air aircraft coming towards him. Hopefully, we miss him. Okay, I think that's far enough. Otherwise, uh, let's have a look. Are we going to get him? No, we're clear of him, so that's cool. Good. So uh, let's just put parking brakes on. Right. So uh, let's shut the engines down. Okay. So actually, didn't know I should have done the other one. So I can see it. Finally got the one down. Boost pumps. Oh, oh. APU was on. It was on. Oh, I just turned it off. All right. So yeah, naughty on that one. Uh, <laughs> APU was on. I just turned it off. So. Uh, Okay, so that's what happens when you turn off the AP, turn off the engines before and, and disconnect the APUs. Okay, so that's on start. Hopefully that's starting up. See how quiet it's gone. There you go. Right, so everything should come back up. Right, yeah, a little mistake on my part there. Right, here we are. Back to where we were. <laughs> cool. The green light was on and I turned it off. Crazy. All right. Uh, right. So let's turn off the boost pumps and turn that off. Right. Okay. So parking, seat belts off, seat belt signs, thrust levers shut off, entice, fuel pumps off, beacon off, nozzle steering off. Okay. And yeah, thrust reverses there off as well. Okay, cool. So oh, open the doors.
Right, good. I hope they enjoyed that flight. I did. Okay, so that is it. I'm just looking around. Yep, everything is done, really. So, yeah, that's it. So, I uh, just want to say thank you very much for uh, joining me on this flight. And, yeah, I hope to see you again in the next video. All right, so uh, I think I'll probably go into the A320 Airbus in the next video. I haven't flown that one for a good while, and there's been a lot and loads and loads of updates since I haven't touched it. So, yeah, so this will be the last flight in the CRJ, and I'm uh, going to take the A320 Airbus up, see what's new on it. Okay, so thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you all again in the next video. Bye for now.